Hello again, everybody. Um, we are at crisis mode right now because it has come to my attention that if we are going off of just Robert E. Howard's original unedited work and going off of Robert E. Howard's map that he drew, there are some inconsistencies with the chronology of the Conan stories. I thought, I thought, I thought, even though there are like, probably like, five or six different timelines or chronologies set up by people who are much smarter than I, I thought that I could figure it out. And I thought I did. And if you recall, in the Queen of the Black Coast video that I posted on Wednesday, there was a moment that this all clicked while I was recording the video. A little flame might have went out in my eye. And um, I, uh, I said, wait a second. That's a bit weird. And then, once the video was over, I checked it and said, Huh, that's weird. And then tried to make sense of it and could do no such thing. And then... I had a complete breakdown. Zoe was tired of hearing about it. Shay was tired of hearing about it. I talked and I talked and I talked. I talked to people in comments on the Queen of the Black Coast video. I was messaging people on Voxer, begging and pleading for someone to make sense of this. I feel like a child who was told that a certain man in a red suit ain't real. Um, I felt like someone who had given tons of money to a televangelist, and then they found out that that televangelist was a criminal of some kind. And... Um, my faith has been shaken. Um, and the funny thing is, the reason why all of this started to seem very strange to me is that right where we are in Queen of the Black Coast, We are on this river that goes into the Black Kingdoms. And we are not very far from where the Slithering Shadow takes place. And we're not very far from where Red Nails takes place. But these stories take place way later in the timeline. And almost everyone's timeline way later. Like, everyone agrees to this. And I'm like, okay, so Queen of the Black Coast, got it. Yeah, no big deal. No big whoop. And I'm like, well, what, what's, what's next here? Let me check this out. And the next story takes place in the Sea to the East. And I was like, huh. That's weird, he was just over there. Why why would he go all the way back over there? That doesn't make much sense. And then there's um, 
another story that takes place in the Western Sea on some islands. And that's coming up in a little bit. And then there's another story that takes place in um, the, uh, what is it? Is it Kashan? It's next to Karaja and um, on the outskirts of Koth. I don't have the map up right now. And then there's a story that takes place there um, after he's already in the Western Sea again. And I'm like, I thought the whole purpose for these, like, timelines was to make a logical reason for why Conan would be, like, he shouldn't be going, like, back and forth, jumping back and forth, jumping back and forth. Doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, well, maybe it's the scale of the map. So then I spent hours researching all sorts of um, different maps of the Hyborian Age and um, what people thought was what. Like, if this was supposed to be... And this is when my mind was blown. I'm like, is this supposed to be like a Pangea thing? Or is this just like a small chunk, you know, of the continents? Um, and that's when I found out that um, there are a lot of different theories about Pangea or a one continent earth or something and we were never taught that in school we were taught hey pangea continental drift uh plate tectonics you know like man there's so much stuff and i'm like this is this is crazy I, th so my mind was blown so i don't know if like younger folks are learning all of this other stuff now so then that blew my mind. And then I did some more research and found out um, that basically the Hyborian Age is a small little chunk of um, Northern Africa and um, Southern Europe. And um, because um, plate tectonics it had been theorized in 1915, but it didn't become like a well-known global, this is exactly how this works thing until like the 60s. So Robert E. Howard wouldn't have known about it. So that's why um, the shape of everything is, it's basically like he took a map of the world, laid it out flat, and then um, just, like, took a towel or something and, like, wrapped it over and then, like, looked down. And he's like, oh, okay, I could see a little bit of land right there. That'll be my Hyborian age and all this is water. Um, so that was an interesting find. Um, and am I spending too much time on this? A am I really? Sp yeah, I feel like I am. Now, you might be asking yourself, what was it that was said that made Mr. Paperback Junkie lose his mind on the Queen of the Black Coast video? And I'll tell you. The... In Queen of the Black Coast, it talks about how... In that one little paragraph where all this other stuff takes place. It alludes to the fact that this is where Conan got his um, nickname of Amra the Lion. Okay? And I'm like, oh, got it. That's interesting. But then I was like, wait a second here. Because in Shadows in the Moonlight, which is a story that's coming up, 
he's in the Eastern Sea, and the Eastern Sea is basically the Caspian Sea. It's a landlocked sea. It does not go out to anything. <clears throat> Even though there's a little river, I've checked on a bunch of different Hyborian Age maps, that river does not make it out to an open body of water. Um, he meets some pirates there and we'll talk about this when we get to it he meets some pirates there and he's like oh yeah i know them that's the red brotherhood you know da -da 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 -da. and they i believe they know him as amra so if they know him as amra how would they know him like that if he was in the Western Sea, and they're in this, I can't remember the name of it, this landlocked Eastern Sea, unless everybody's running all over, back and forth, all over the Hyborian lands, it didn't make any sense to me. And I'm like, this, this can't be right. Why would he be going back over there anyway? Like, everything started to kind of drift into why would this be and so i'm like okay well if i put this story here and this story here this should clear this up but every time i did that i would find a little hint of something like conan would say something just like oh yeah like some time i spent in tehran or something and i'm like well, what the fuck was he doing in Tehran before this? He shouldn't have been in Tehran before this. And then I start freaking out again. And so just that little hint of doubt. I've, I've been working on this, like, timeline thing. And double-checking facts of all the other timelines. Seriously? For, like... I think the first time I did it, I was in North Hollywood. Like, so we're talking years here. And just one offhanded remark completely sunk my ship. So I'm here to tell you that I do not think there is a way to logically put the Conan stories together in any realistic timeline. Unless I'm wrong. Um, I guess he can be on foot walking across Europe and Northern Africa. Like, oh, I'm on the West Coast. I'm going to go to the East Coast now. Well, I'm on the West Coast now. I'm going to go to the East Coast now. He does this every couple weeks. Or a couple of years, depending on how slow he's walking. Um, so, what this means is the essay, the Hyborian Age, the um, timeline that um, Miller and Clark came up with, that Howard made a couple um, fixes to, and I quote Howard in saying, this is pretty close to how I see it. Um, all of this, the maps, everything. Robert E. Howard just wanted to write a bunch of fun, fancy stories. That's it. He wasn't putting much thought into it. He put a lot of thought into the stories, but not in how they connected. And I'm a douchebag for trying to make that happen. My heart's been broken. My faith has been shattered. Um, a lot of people who I think are very dear friends have laughed at me. I am the only one who cares. And that's okay. Because I care too much. So with that being said, I'm going to continue the Conan chronology, but it's not going to be accurate. So I'm a complete hypocrite and a liar.
and um, that's okay because we're talking about fiction. Um, and um, my daughter had to tell me, she looked at me and she said, Dad, Conan's not real. I almost slapped her mouth. I almost did it. But she has a bit of a point. Conan is a fictional character. And this hurts me to say it out of my own mouth. But Conan isn't real. <laughs> fuck my life. Okay, so anyway guys, um, let me know down below if I burst your bubble, or, um, if you think I need to call a suicide hotline or not. So, until next time everybody, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.